This powerful $99 drone is now available in the U.S. This powerful $99 drone is now available in the U.S. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. We are so excited to be here in 
the cyber sanctuary with new image christian fellowship all our friends and facebook and youtube family we bless god for you this morning thank you jesus the time has gone up i even forgot to remind folk last night on uh, our tea time with miss t that don't forget the time goes up an hour but thank god for phones and laptops that automatically do it <laughs> we bless the lord we thank god this morning and we pray that all of you, that we adjust to this new time. And you know, it, it was something that daddy brought to my attention. And I'm just going to share this with you. Um, when I was thinking about, you know, the time going up, the time going back, because I think there's some countries, they don't do all that up and down stuff. They they just, uh, once whatever is set on, it's just set on. And they just go by the time, no matter what the... Uh, um, what the uh, weather or the changing and the shifting of the of the sun and all, they don't even worry about all that. They just go with one straight time. But over here we shift. And uh, I was just thinking about that one uh, day and, da and daddy said, this is plain to me, our heavenly father, God, Jesus, however you address him, that's how I address him. Uh, he said to me, he said, have you ever noticed that there's more time to spring forward than there is to fall back. He said there's four months of falling. We we fall back, I believe it is um, November, first Sunday in November, I think the time goes back. And then you have November, December, January, February, either the first or the second, by the second Sunday in March, you spring forward. Then you have March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Eight months you have to spring forward and four months to fall back. Isn't that something? Oh, my goodness. I said, oh, my Lord. I said, that's the truth. I said, he said, you have more time to blossom than you do to uh, what they call it, hibernate. And the hibernate is to give you time to rest from all of the springing forward and blossoming that you've been doing. Isn't that something? Oh, I never forgot that. So when it comes time to spring forward, you have eight months and eight is the number of new beginning. You have eight months to go forth and you have four months, which is the number of supernatural to fall back. What's the supernatural to fall back for? To get some rest, to refresh, to recuperate, and to get ready for another new beginning. I'm telling you, God has so many specific points. I mean, everything he does has a purpose for it. So we bless God this morning and we thank God for that and for all of you who are joining New Image Christian Fellowship this morning, we greet you in Jesus' name. We thank God for our ministers here, uh, Evangelist uh, Sahib, who is with us online, Bishop Rouse, who is coming in. He, <laughs> he forgot that the time went up. And uh, so he's on his way. We bless God for Elder Greenfield, for Elder Branch. It's possible that the same thing happened. I don't know. Elder Branch is military, so I got a feeling she probably already had her stuff set. But we bless God this morning for them. We also thank God for those pastors and leaders who be with us uh, and apostles and bishops who come in to be with us uh, from time to time. We have uh, uh, prophetess and co prophetess and co-pastor Paulette Zimmerman, who is faithful to being with New Image uh, Christian Fellowship. She uh, pastors along with her husband, Bishop Samuel Zimmerman. They pastor the House of Prayer, the In Gathering, and their mission uh, for right now is to pray for leaders, to pray for leaders. 
and they do that religiously. And it's not just on Sunday morning. They pray all during the week for those who are in leadership that we would do daddy's ministry according to his specifications and not ours. We also bless the Lord for Apostle Doris Smith. They're out of uh, the House of End Gathering. The House of Prayer, the End Gathering is in South Carolina and New York. And so we bless God for uh, those locations being blessed by that ministry. We also thank God for Apostle Doris Smith uh, and the Greater Works Miracle Ministry out of Miami, Florida, who is doing a phenomenal job uh, doing outreach and uh, so forth so that they can um, reach the masses, the homeless, the elderly, uh, the little children, they make sure that people are fed. They make sure that people are uh, 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 clothed. They make sure that those that, you know, sleep outdoors and what have you uh, are not cold. Uh, it, it's just phenomenal to see uh, how they go forth in doing what they have to do. And we bless the Lord for it. We thank God also for uh, Pastor Shate Holiday, First Man Holiday of Truth and Love Ministries in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Uh, they are doing a phenomenal job. They have service this morning at 11 a.m. Uh, and so we bless God if you're in that area or know of them and can get there, by all means do so. We also bless the Lord for uh, Elder uh, um, Janice Myers, who uh, is very faithful to stopping in and, and being a part. I bless God for her. Thank God for Elder Sonia Moore. Thank God for uh, uh, a lot of all more other of you. We thank God for Pastor Bobby uh, and, past, and Lady Tara, co-pastor, Tara Perkins of the uh, New Birth Outreach Ministries in Hampton, Virginia, who stop in uh, frequently and be with us. We bless God for them. We thank God for all who are, are coming in and, and blessing us and being there. We thank God even for those who may not come in, but maybe they're praying. Uh, we know uh, others have uh businesses and ministries that they are handling, but maybe they know and they have stopped by and they say, well, Lord, let me just pray. I can't be there, but let me just pray. So we bless the Lord. And for all others who come in to join with New Image, any uh, uh, broadcasters that we have, we bless the Lord uh, for them and for what is going on with them. So we thank God because all of us, uh, all of us are um, trying to do what the Lord have called us to do. And he have given us uh, different assignments. So we have to be about our father's business. We bless the Lord uh, for that. Also, uh, this morning, we bless God. We're going to ask uh, Evangelist Saheed if she would give us our opening prayer, and then we'll go forth with the rest of the service. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for bringing us this far. We thank you for allowing us to be able to spring forward today. Lord, we bring forth the messenger and what you have given him to get to us. And Lord, that we may apply to our personal lives. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We bind any distractions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. <clears throat> Glory to God. Bishop uh, is, is still, he forgot his, his tie, so he's going to get his tie. Amen. And so he can come back on. And uh, he's going to give us our word this morning. We are so excited. We've been talking about the blood, and we bless the Lord this morning. We thank God for the blood. I, I tell you, I'm excited. Uh, it's so much in the blood. You, you just never know how much is in the blood. We bless God for that. I tell you, I've, I've seen the blood. You know, you look at it, it's red. It's when you're in the hospital, you look at it in this packet and what have you. And you never, you know that it means life. 
But oh my God, the, the digging that we're doing with the blood, it's just making the blood for me more and more and more important for to really take, you know, to really value the blood even the more. And so this month, we started off in January talking about the power of the blood. Last month, February, we talked about the purpose of the blood. And this month, we're doing the need of the blood. After you learn about the power and you find out the purpose, then what is the need of the blood? And everybody is just digging in for the need of the blood. So this morning, we know that Bishop Rouse, uh, he has, uh, uh, that, that's just, I, that's where his flavor is, is in that blood. I mean, he breaks down the word. I don't care what he's talking about, but it's just something about when he gets to talking about the blood, it just, his whole demeanor changes. And uh, we just bless God for that. So we thank God and we bless the Lord for that. Bishop, are you ready, sir? Good morning. Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, we are going to uh, present to some and introduce to others, none other than Bishop Russell Rouse, Jr. God bless you, man of God. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if my microphone's on. I don't think it is. Okay, it is. I'm on we my phone. We can hear you. Okay. We can hear you. It's a little bit tough. My computer. But, uh, good morning to everyone. Um, thank you for joining us once again on this morning. I do apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I did forget to set my clock. And uh, it, it, I, I just did. I woke up. And if it wasn't for Evangelist, uh, he called me and asked me where was I at. I would, I would have been walking out the door trying to go get some gas. I don't know. Uh, I, I forgot. I and I apologize, but uh, I do uh, greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I do thank uh, the Lord for another day that He has brought us uh, to be above ground and not underneath. Uh, thank the Lord for our Chief Apostle uh, uh, Macara. Uh, thank you for Francis Marisa Heben, El Rico, uh, 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 Barnfield in uh greenfield we call greenfield i'm tripping and then uh Green, greenfield. greenfield yeah i'm tripping sorry i got wrong rico and then um uh eldris uh tawana branch but i thank the lord for everybody she has uh that that uh partners or uh, uh fellowships with us and so on this morning our uh, topic uh for this morning is uh the need the need for the blood in our scripture is uh, Ephesians uh, 2 um, and 13. Uh, once again, that's Ephesians 2 and 13. Uh, and it does read, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made now by the blood of Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made now by the blood of Jesus. And I am reading from the King James Version. I, I do understand there are uh, many different versions or some words are different, but I, for some reason, I've always liked to read from the King James Version. I can't tell you why, I just always have. Uh, but that was Ephesians uh, 2 and 13. Uh, and uh, we, we as, as Christians, we understand there is a need for uh, the blood. There is a need for uh, everything. I mean, there, there's significant needs uh, and there's a difference between a need and a want. The blood is not something that a lot of people want, but it is something that we all need. Uh, there's a difference. Uh, once again, there's, it's not something that uh, we all want. Uh, and, I, and I say we all want because I can't speak for everybody, but some if you want it, then you'll get it. It's, it's kind of how I was raised. And if you don't want it, then you, you don't work to get it. But it was something uh, that we was given and something that uh, God, our Heavenly Father, recognized that we would need. And if it wasn't for our big brother, Jesus to Christ, then, you know, we would all still uh, be doing a lot of uh, <laughs> Uh, pulling of goats and bullocks and other sacrifices for every time that we um, uh, commit uh, an act of sin. 
so we we thank the Lord that uh, the need for the blood has a, a big significant uh, spiritual uh, a, a big spiritual significance, uh, and we recognize that we do understand that the you know the importance of the blood and the need of the blood. We did the importance of the blood, the purpose of the blood, and the need of the blood, and so blood does. You know, in this natural sense, blood does transport oxygen and nutrients uh, around the body and it helps remove waste. That's what the blood does. It it also regulates our bodily temperature and helps us to fight off infections. And, uh, you know, we, we need blood because in short, it brings life. Uh, the cells in our body cannot have uh, their or cannot perform their duties without blood. <laughs> And uh, we think blood, everybody think when they see blood, it's, it's such a, uh, a something that sometimes people see blood, they pass out. Sometimes uh, people see blood, it makes them want to throw up or, you know, it makes them, you know, light on their stomach and things like that. But uh, I want to help everybody understand that the Bible tells us that the blood also it has life giving and purification uh, that for our spirit, for our spirit. And so, you know, if, if we think of, uh, and I know our base scripture is Ephesians 2 and 13, but if I can draw your attention to uh, Leviticus 17 and 11, and it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes the atonement by life. And then also in Hebrews 9 and 22, it says, indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with the blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And that was our base scripture a couple of months ago. So we, we a lot of people think of of the blood or let me say a lot of people may think of the blood because I can't say a lot of people think of the blood because they'll be speaking for people. But a lot of people may think of the blood or some people may think of the blood as simply, uh, you know, body fluid that, that comes in four basic categories, you know, our blood types, uh, which is A, B, A, B, or O. And, and, you know, they might think of the blood when you, you know, bump your hand on something or you scratch something like that. But but everybody's blood has a, a it has a unique biomedical uh, 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 let me see, biomedical uh, property or uh, let me see, market. Market is a type of word because uh, even those that are, you know, identical twins or fraternal twins with similar DNA are unique in their blood composition. And, and those, it's amazing how it doesn't matter what race we are. It doesn't matter what part of the country you come from. Uh, if that blood is given and that blood is, is checked out and there's no uh uh differences or uh, deficiencies in that blood that blood from one person can also help save uh uh that human being's life so the the need for blood is is very uh significant because if you go back to the scripture and the scripture uh, let me let me get back to my 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 note but the scripture said but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes ye who sometimes were far off or made now by the blood of Christ. And if you read the scripture, you got to understand that all of us were far off. Some of us are still far off. Some of us are farther away than we were uh, a couple of years ago. Some of us may be closer than we was uh, a couple of years ago. But at the same time, you know, it, it's amazing that with the blood, we have we were given a chance uh, to be in communion with God because of our uh atonement and, that, and that's the thing that the late uh uh bishop assistant to the bishop michael uh whitfield uh my uncle used to uh, uh when he talked about the blood when he got to uh explaining about atonement it was it was a difference it made me have a uh, or want to learn why was it so special to him to talk about that and as i began to get in ministry and study it uh and and actually understand why <clears throat> it had to be done and why you know, it, it, the biggest sacrifice you can name had to be done. It, it brought a significant meaning. So the blood, you know, when you uh, talk about the blood, we have to understand that the blood is both physical and it and it's a spiritual. It, it, it has a spirit, a physical life, <clears throat> and then the blood. Excuse me. And then the blood has a a a spiritual. I mean, a physical life, and then it has a spiritual life. Uh, you have to understand that that with uh, with life. Uh, it is the life of every creation. And uh, I touched on Leviticus uh, 17 and 11 earlier, but if you look at Leviticus 17 and 14, it says, for the life of every creature is in the blood, its blood is its life. Therefore, I have said to the people of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. 
whoever eats it shall be cut off. And there's also a covenant uh, in the blood. It is the mark of, uh, of any blinding agreement between God and his people. And I'm going to say that again. It's a mark between any uh, blinding agreement because sometimes people agree on things and one party is aware of the agreement and in, in its entirety. And then the other part is not aware of the agreement in its entirety. They're only aware of what they think uh, they hear or what they think they see or what they think they know. Uh, but the covenant, uh, it, it's, it's a mark of any blind and agreement between God and his people. And in Exodus 24 and 8, it said that Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words. So therefore, we have to understand that there's also a covenant with it. So now, uh, we have to think about that uh, in Ephesians 2 and 13, a little background of it, that, that God, uh, God chose to take uh, people uh, from his from his name, from the sins of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to proclaim uh, to the nations of get this now the goodness of God. And for thousands of years, the only way, the only way that mankind for thousands of years would approach all the God was through Israel's high priest. That was that's what we're talking about, the sacrifice, the bloodshed. And uh, and there are uh, the, the sacrificial uh, system. But uh, when you think about it here, you got to understand that now, before we were born again, okay, before we were born again into the family of God, we were without Christ. We were without a heavenly citizenship. And that's something there that, that you got to think about because, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of things going on into the world. And one thing about the United States of America, and I'm just tying the two in, is that we, uh, st uh, in statistical uh, categories, uh, we are not number one in those categories as we was when I was growing up back in the in the in the early nineties, mid nineties, and late nineties. Back in those times, USA was one in everything. We was one in manufacturing. We was one in production. We was one in education. We always been uh, number one in a uh, uh, in athletics, uh, depending on the athletic category. Uh, uh, but we always was at the top notch, and so now it has become. Uh, that uh, USA, we trade and, uh, uh, you know, we import and export things to other countries. Uh, but USA is the only country that all the other countries want to get to. Uh, you know, you, 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 and I'm not being funny, but if you go to other countries, you will find um, some difference besides military. You will find some uh, people who might have migrated uh, to that country. But if you look at the United States of America, we are the only country where you have so many. We are very diverse in, in, in our uh, uh, population that you have so many others from other countries that want to get to America. They It's just, I mean, they, I've heard some students say, you know, those who parents have migrated uh, to uh, the the uh, United States of America, they, they used to tell me, they said, Mr. Rouse, it was like a dream in our country to get to the USA. You know, that's all my parents were talking about. It was like a dream. And I would say, why is that? They would say, because it, it just, you, you, you we, it's just you needed everything. That's what they would say. You, you have everything here. The way the commercials that you guys would bring, it's like everything were here. So they will leave their country just to try to provide, I mean, or to gain, not provide, to gain citizenship here uh, in the USA. And so now we were the same, we were the, the same in the same sense in the spiritual realm. We were without, uh, before we were born again, we were without a heavenly citizenship. We were we, we, we was around here. Uh, we didn't have to migrate from, from earth. And eventually, we're going to have to go from earth to glory uh, whenever the Lord uh, calls our name on the road. But um, uh, we're in the same sense, we were without heavenly citizenship. So we have been, uh, before the blood, working uh, and doing these, these sacrifices uh, that we thought that we had to do just to gain citizenship uh, with with heaven, with God. But but therefore, we learn uh, that with the blood of Jesus Christ, it was once and done for all that all of this sacrifice and then bloodshed. It was so much bloodshed we can't nobody can, of us can um, any of us cannot imagine how much bloodshed. But we don't have to uh, do that sacrifice. But what we have to understand that now we are born again, we have that heavenly citizenship. But you got to understand this, that without uh, uh, 
a covenant relationship with God, without God's promises, without access to the throne of grace. And that's something that a lot of people need to remember that the blood and the need for the blood uh, done for us uh, without the throne of grace and without uh, any type of hope. Uh, we are still lost or we were still lost, but uh, through the blood, we have gained a heavenly uh, citizenship. We have gained that covenant relationship. We have gained uh, the promises of God. We have gained that access through the throne of grace and we have gained that hope. And that hope uh, for the songs that my hope is built on nothing less than uh, Jesus' uh, blood and righteousness. Uh, I, I think is I did not trust the, I did not trust the, the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus' name. I think that's it. And then it's on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And the only reason why we can stand on Christ because we understand what Christ stood for. Uh, so we we have to understand now that that uh, uh, before we were accepted uh, in, into uh, the beloved uh, of Jesus to Christ by our grace, uh, through his faith, his sacrificial death and his resurrection, uh, we were spiritually dead. And that's the thing you can you can have. Uh, you, you've seen so many uh, things in this world. Uh, that was once uh, full of life. And then, you know, let's take a tree for example. You know, some trees, uh, I, I don't want to cut down every tree in my yard, but uh, it's only one tree that I'm going to keep in my yard. But for the most part, uh, uh, you have some trees who may have been full of life. They was uh, a full, I mean, leaves is, is beautiful. I mean, the bark of the tree is beautiful. The way it stands and the place that it uh, uh, was, uh, I guess, uh, grew in the, in the yard or grew in the lawn, it just brought a significant shelter to that part of, uh, of the yard while it was full of life. And then uh, uh, when that tree began to die out or, you know, began, a lot of trees been here from, from 300 years or so or whatever, but whatever uh, descent decided to, or whatever caused, I can't say decided to, whatever caused that tree to lose its beauty uh, and began to become uh, something where it's, it's oh, I, that, that tree got to go. You got to think about that, that it, we was the same way when we're in Christ and when we're, when we, 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 when we have reference and when we, when we reference the blood uh, and the sacrifice of Jesus to Christ, we understand and we keep our spiritual man alive when we do those things. And we understand what God did not have to do and what Jesus decided to do uh, because the Bible says God forgave, uh, he, he gave us his only begotten son, but at the same time, Jesus descended from heaven down here to, to earth. So you, you got to understand that we were spiritually dead just like those trees and had it not been for the need uh and, and there was there was a thing it, it was a need that there was a lot of wants that was going on and there's a lot of wants that still go on but but the, the the overall emphasis of ephesians 2 and 13 is the need for the blood that, that there's a need there and the need is that what you can do on the spiritual i mean on the natural side uh we we often uh, and i know growing up when i first got in uh, into my understanding of, 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 of who Jesus was, I thought that what I could do on the natural side could also be done on the spiritual side. And that was wrong because you can't do anything on the natural side unless the spiritual man is full of life first. You, you got to understand that sometimes, you know, you, 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 you take so much time and to put an energy in the wrong places. We, we, we spend more time on the night. And I, I'm talking about me. I've spent so much time on the natural side that I could feel my spiritual man beginning to grow weak. And, I'm, and, and when your spiritual man begins to grow weak, the only thing that he's growing weak from is when you are not praying as you should and you're not studying the word of God because the only thing that, that feeds the spiritual being, the inside, is the understanding of God's word, prayer, prayer without supplication, and, and then and then the other thing is uh, uh, fasting, because something only comes by, as the Bible says, by fasting and praying. So 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 therefore, your spiritual man is dead, and it, you can easily become doomed in separation from God. But now. OK, but now you, it's just something about the now part. But now in my notes that I wrote uh, through the blood of Jesus, all restrictions in the approaching of the, our creator, our God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been lifted. 
and all barriers and and and, and to the father has been removed and some as apostle has said uh times before and, and sometimes in my late uh grandmother overseer Adam Marie Prince and he was advanced to me so he even those in my uh, immediate family my father my brother I've heard that 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 you have to understand here that we don't have to do what they had to do in those Bible days to get to God. I mean, the good thing about it is uh, when you got the best lawyer, when you got an advocate such as Jesus to Christ, who can hear what you hear. And when we pray to him, it's a, it's a special thing for him to take your barriers and to take your heavy load and walk it right up to the Father. What we cannot naturally and spiritually uh, bear, uh, God takes it with ease right up there. I mean, Jesus takes it with ease right there to our heavenly Father and says, this is what he or she is saying. This is what they mean. And, and, and we got to help them because I paid for this. You know, it's something I and, and I, I had to think about it because uh it, it happened yesterday and, and and just just to be on 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 the honesty part, uh I, I had to I gotta bring this point in. Uh yesterday there was supposed to be an appliance delivered uh to my home. Uh and, and so uh, uh the appliance was delivered to my home and 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 the gentleman came in and they they put it in and 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 they when they got done. You know, it, it was some it was some things on the floor that weren't supposed to be on the floor. And, and then when they left, you know, I tried to call them. I, tried, I was blowing the phone up, calling them. Then, and, and you know how some some delivery people is. It's, it's the same number that they called you from. And then when you call them back, they act like they don't see your call coming. Uh, and so I was calling them and blowing the phone up. I mean, I, I was just trying to catch them before they got you know way out of out of range from my home. Uh, uh to to that something that they made an error. And so the, the, the gentleman wouldn't pick up and I, I, I text the number and, and, and they wouldn't they didn't text me back and I called again. <clears throat> and they still uh, didn't text me back anything. And I, I said, OK, we're well, fine. And the one thing that I've learned from uh, my grandmother and my parents uh, is that you keep a receipt. And when the delivery man come do a job, they have to leave a uh, work order with you. And, and so uh, I, I got the work order and I go out there uh, to Lowe's where uh, I, I purchased the appliance from. And, and I was very, 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 very irritated. I, I did not cuss. I did not yell. But I was highly irritated because of, of, of I'm trying to reach these guys and they won't pick up the phone. But they were blowing my phone up to reach me to make sure someone was home. Uh, and, and now that I'm reaching them, they won't there. So I go out there to load and, and, I, and I look at the work order and the work order clearly states what's supposed to be at my house. I mean, it clearly states what's supposed to be at my house and, and, and the cords and whatever else supposed to be done is all up there. It clearly states on the work order what's supposed to be at my house. It clearly has my name, you know, the, the address and everything. And so it, it just behooved me how in the world did these delivery men place the wrong order at my house when the work order clearly has everything uh, 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 on it. And, and, and see, I, I, yesterday I was mad, but now I'm getting happy because when I went out there to Lowe's, you know, and I, I, I didn't yell at anybody. I just, the man asked me, how can I help you? And I told him why I was there and I had my paper in my hand and I told him in so many words that I was very disappointed in the unprofessionalism of the delivery man and how they put the wrong appliance in the house with the work order clearly stating and how you're supposed to check the work order before you even get off the truck and how you're supposed to check the work order before you even left the, the, uh, the location or, or business where you picked it up to transport it to that home. I said, and now these gentlemen won't pick up the phone. And not only that, these gentlemen were using some type of, they, they used a, a type of profanity in my home, which I didn't, I didn't play that neither. And so the, the man looked at the work order. He said, sir, he said, you, you're right. He said, clearly states right here, such and such. I said, yeah. I said, so how in the world they placed the wrong appliance in my house? And now they're not picking up the truck. So he went and got the receiving coordinator at at, uh, at Lowe's, and she came and you know she said, Ms., you know, Miss Rouse, I apologize. And I said, Ma'am, I'm not mad with you. I said, the only reason I'm mad is the gentleman won't pick up the phone. They 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 you know they got there. They, they before they got to my home, they were blowing my phone up, uh, and I didn't recognize the number until I heard the voicemail. But they uh they they were blowing my phone up to make sure somebody went home, and now I'm calling that same number, and now I'm texting that same number just to let these gentlemen know that hey, you had the wrong appliance in my home, and they won't pick up. So she looked at the order 
she said, mm. she said, Mr. Rousey, right. She said, I, I apologize. I, I really do. She said, I'll take the blame for it. I said, ma'am, you're not the delivery man. I said, the delivery man is supposed to read the order before they even leave. I went back all over it again. And she said, I understand that, Mr. Rousey. She said, you know, is there anything, you know, can, can it be delivered tomorrow or Monday? I said, ma'am, it was supposed to be delivered today. And I said, you know, today, it was supposed to be delivered today. I've been waiting all week for it. It's supposed to be delivered today. If I got to wait another day, another two days, y'all know how we get. We start putting pressure on it. If I got to wait another day or two days, then y'all going to pay for this. I'm not going to pay for it because it was supposed to be delivered today or something taken off. And so, uh, uh, you know, the lady, she she looked at me and, and, and she, you know, I couldn't, I didn't know who was that far. I didn't know she was that far. The living man was that far. All I know is the wrong apply. Uh, but what, what I got to was I told her, I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I'm available tomorrow. I said, I'll make myself available tomorrow. I said, you know, I, I, I spoke to be at church tomorrow. I said, during do, do, that time, I said, so I'm going to have to call, you know, uh, my, my parent and tell my parent that I'm not going to be able to, to do what I need to do with them because I got to be at home missing church because y'all made an error and I went back through it again and she said she said well no I don't want I don't want you to miss church I said well I got to miss it because if, if there's nobody else gonna be at the home and so when I got in the car and I say all that to say this I got in the car when I looked at I looked back at the order again and I said it was amazing to me how the same way that that the order I mean, specifically had everything, you know, item one, item, you know, we had to check it off. Item one through six and all those things. The same way that that order had my name on it, uh, uh, but the wrong order was delivered. I thank God that the order that had my name on it when it came to Jesus Christ was rightfully delivered. And, and what I what I mean by that is, you know, it, when you look at the work order, uh, uh, and those of uh, those of us that are adults, and I, I'm pretty sure that the majority of us that are adults on on on, on the Facebook Live or or YouTube or Instagram, whatever platform we're on uh, this morning. But when you look at a work order, it has your name, it has your address, it has your telephone number, it has the item number or the items number. And so when it hit me, I I, I sat in that car and I looked at my, the work order and I said, man. I said, that's crazy. And my nephew looked at me, he said, what? I said, man, that's crazy. And I just kept saying that's crazy because it took, it took a spiritual meaning to me that I don't have to take the work order, the wrong work order back to Jesus to Christ and say, hey, man, you delivered the wrong blood. But I thank him that he delivered the right blood, the blood that had no blemish. I mean, it was the only blood that was unblemished. It was the only blood without spot or wrinkle or without any deficiency in it. And I, he took the the right work order to God. And, and this is the thing, you know, I, I understand that Jesus died for all of us, but I've learned from an early age, um, the older I got from an early age, I started to realize that this is an individual walk. No matter how much I love my siblings, no matter how much I love my son, no matter how much I love my family, my parents, and and, and, and those uh, that, are, that are near and far, I, I still can't stand in front of God on your behalf. I, I, there's nothing that I can do to but that to, to, to help God to change his verdict of your life. There's nothing that I can do. So so I'm happy that, that I'm speaking for my own work order, that God, that Jesus the Christ took the work order for my life and he took it right to God and said, listen here, I got items one, I got items two, I got items three. I don't need items two through 10. The only item I need is the first one, which is my blood. I, I got the item number one, which is my blood. And the only way that this work order can be completed and, 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 and to be created successfully is that I have to take this work order to the Christ and to the cross and what he did. And, and see, I'm talking about me now. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, y'all can talk about y'all. That's y'all business. I'm talking about me. He took my work order and he nailed it to the cross. And the way that he nailed it to the cross was with his blood and, and with the beating that he did. And for every time I, he stood in that courtyard, he understood that there was a need for him to be beaten just for me. Now, you can talk about you all you want, but we'll talk about you later. I, I'm talking about me. It was a it was a need for the blood. It, it was a need for Russell Ross, the blood that's in my body, the, 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 the blood that, that covered the sins uh, that he put up on his back and carried it far away that I can't, that he can't even remember. Uh, 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 what 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 sins I created? The same blood that helps him that he he doesn't even uh, remember what I committed when I asked him uh, to 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 be the captain of my ship and 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 to c commit my life and and to place my hand in his hand and to walk with him. There was a need for the blood because now 
think about this. We who were once dead, we are now made alive. And that's the thing. You you need the blood for something to come alive, okay? And I, there's a thing. In any type of surgery, they make sure that they have blood on standby because if the body loses too much blood, that person can die. But if you have uh, the blood and the, the abundance of blood, and that's why if you think about life, blood would never go anywhere because when does the blood of Jesus to Christ run out? Never. Uh, that's that's the thing. It, his blood never runs out for the blood that's now in 2022 on March the 13th or March the 14th, excuse me, is the same blood that was committed and 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 and, and sacrificed over 2022 years ago. So now we who once were dead are made alive, and we who, who were once lost, we are now found, and we who were once perishing uh, and enslaved to sin are now rescued, and we who were once sick have now been made whole. You got to understand that we who were once sinners have now been made saints. We who were once condemned have now been made free. We who were once in darkness have been brought into the kingdom of light. We who had no promises of God flooded with the many precious promises of God, which are all yes and amen now in Christ. We who were formerly were far off have been brought back near the blood of the Christ. Let us live our life. You got to live our lives unto the Lord. Don't you live your life to nobody else, okay? You live your life unto the Lord. And, and that's the thing that you got to understand. And your, your blood, there's nobody on this earth that can help with your blood. There's nobody on this earth that can uh, 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 rescue your blood. But one thing you can do is you can live your life unto the Lord and he will put those people or those personal persons in your life that are living their life for the Lord that can help you. He alone is worthy. God alone is worthy of our praise. So now we have to understand that while we were still dead in our trespasses and sin and in the enmity with, with, with God, Christ Jesus died for us. We ought to thank God for his blood and not only thank him for his blood, but thank him that there was a need for the blood because that need paid the price for our sins. And that need paid the price for my sins. And, and, and by the grace, through the faith in God, we have been brought near to him. We have been returned into our covenant relationship with God. We have been forgiven of our sins and we have received the gift of eternal life. And to God alone, we offer our praises. We should offer our praises and our worship. We should understand and, 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 and remember here that, that God is good because he has purified our sins. He has forgiven our sins and now he has given us peace with God. We thank God that even though it was necessary for our purification rights under God's law, even though it was necessary for the forgiveness of our sin, that it was the atonement that it, that was shed for the forgiveness of our sin, it was what, the reason why Jesus to Christ paid the price with his blood. Notice there was nothing else that God needed but the blood. There was, there was nothing else. You know, your blood was shed, but what kind of blood? And that's why when you do Holy Communion and they ask the questions, what can wash away my sins? It's a rhetorical question, but the answer is nothing. And they didn't just say nothing with a comma, but it's nothing but. <laughs> but is a conjunction which joins the first part of the sentence to the second part. The first part gives you an explanation. The second part gives you the answer. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you're still on hold on this morning, the only way that you can get whole again, you need the blood. Because the song said, what can make me whole again? And then it's a rhetorical question. That's, and that's one thing I, I, I'm telling you, I wish I could go back to the church of the 90s because you barely made it through devotion service when they started talking about the blood. And I, I didn't understand as a, as a young, you know, elementary student or or, or or a sixth grader and, and you know, my, my 10 and 11 and, or 12 years old. But if I can go back those years now to where the understanding I have now, I probably wouldn't make it in the front door because there was nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's why the song said, and I'm singing old oh, precious is that, I think the old precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. 
And the, and the presence of the flow is, the presence of the flow is the, the blood that came from his body when he was in the courtyard. And I, I tell everybody to talk about the cross and I'm with it. I, I'm with the cross, but I like to go back to the courtyard. I like to go back to the flagellum that they had in their hand. And that flagellum was a long whip that had inside of it broken up bones and, and metal balls that when it hit the body, the purpose of it swinging was that it would rip open the body. It, it didn't take 10 licks for them to rip open the body. The whip and, and the bones in there was, was sharp, had sharp edges on them and the, the metal balls that when it swung and hit it, I mean, I couldn't even tell you, I don't even like switches. And I'm a grown man. If somebody hit me with something sharp and I can feel it, I'm, you gonna hear from, you gonna hear my mouth as to why you better not do that again. But he never told them to stop. The Bible doesn't record, but I, I just know that the song says, my God is, my God is strong. Uh, the Honorable uh, Lynette Jarman, she's singing all the time, my God is strong, my God is mighty. And it goes into details of just how strong his description of how strong he is. But he never told them to stop in the courtyard. He never asked them for a break. That's that's the thing. When we was getting, you know, our discipline growing up. We asked our parents, you know, we used to say, hold on or something like that, or try to stick your hand up to try to get a break or try to hide behind something just to get a couple of breaths of air before you had to finish. But he never told them to stop. And that's, that's something that just hit me right then. He never told them to stop. He never told them, can we continue this another day? He never, he never asked them for anything. The Bible doesn't record that he even asked them for a drink of water. But they gave him what they gave him. That's amazing. When, when you are determined as Jesus the Christ was. You never ask God for a break. And that's something that just, He never asked him for a break. Because he knew there was a need. And for every individual that's up here on this morning, you are the reason why he never asked them for a break. Because he knew that you needed his blood. And the only way that his blood can be taken out of his body, he had to be beaten. You got to understand what was done to him. Those of us that know about Emmett Till, the young man who was wrongfully accused for whistling at a young lady was beaten to where they couldn't even recognize who he was. And if it wasn't for a specific mark on his body, his mother wouldn't even recognize that that was her son. And at the funeral, she never had a closed casket because she wanted others to see just what was done to her son. And I've seen pictures of that funeral with Emmett Till and I, I heard the songs that was played on that video. And she never closed the casket because she wanted to see what was wrongfully done to her son. The way he was beaten, the way you couldn't even recognize him. You know, Emmett Till was not the first person that was wrongfully beaten for something that he didn't do. Emmett Till, and I'm not, I'm not bringing 
I'm not bringing disrespect to his his descendants and his family, but he wasn't the first one that was beaten unrecognizable. He wasn't the first one that was beaten for an action he didn't commit. Because last time I checked, the first one was Jesus the Christ. But I thank God, and I hope some of y'all understand on this morning, that the need for the blood, if you're watching this on, on, on whatever social media platform you're on, And sometimes now I see why when, when stuff hits you, you get real quiet and you just want to sit still. Because the need for the blood is right here on this line this morning. Every last one of us. But it's just amazing. I just want you to continue to think about as I turn it back over to the hands of the Honorable Apostle Tamar T. McCow, I just want you to think about that he never asked them to stop. He never asked them to take a break. He never asked them, can we continue this next week? But he kept going. And that's why some of you all, you if you want to understand why you can't stop, if you want to understand why you got to keep going, and why even when you try to stop, God, the spirit of God comes over you and tells you to keep going, is because he never stopped. And if we can do as Philippians 4 and 13 said, if we can do all things through Christ, I'm not saying we, we are not able to take what he took, but because he took and we are in him, we are able to withstand the trials and the tribulations on this world because of his blood. So I thank the Lord for even opening my eyes as to the need of the blood. God bless y'all on this morning. I turn back over to the hands of the Honorable Tomorrow T. McCarthy. Oh God. Oh God. I'm I'm not even gonna touch that. That 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 flavor needs to sit right there. But if there's somebody out there this morning this afternoon, tonight, whenever you're listening to this broadcast, if there's somebody out there that doesn't know anything about this blood that Bishop Rouse just got through talking about, I want to invite you to come and experience this blood. I even see even more in depth why David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because with what Bishop Rouse just left, well, what the Holy Ghost, because that was hot off the press, because I never heard that. And I've been in, in ministry all my life. I never heard it put just like that. He never asked for a break. He never said, stop. He never said, can we continue this later? And it was all because of you. He knew you were going to be born and he wanted you to have access to him through his blood. That's what I, your heavenly father wanted. He wanted you to be able to talk to him and commune with him and live. He come and live inside of you like Jesus said that they would do. And he knew the only way that could happen was through the blood. So this morning, if you're watching, you might say, well, I, I don't know how to, how do I get it? Romans 10 and 9 say, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's simple. I know the body of Christ has made it complicated, but it is simple. There's nothing about Jesus that's complicated. There's a whole lot about man that's complicated, but there ain't all humans not. When I say that, I'm talking about the human race. 
But when it comes to Jesus, everything about him is just simple. So I ask you right now, can you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus? You can, okay. And can you believe in your heart that God, your heavenly father, raised his son from the dead? You do? That's it. You're, you're, you're in the family. It's that, that's it. You now have access to this blood that Bishop Rouse just got through talking about. And we welcome you to the family of God. Now, I encourage you. It's got to be a ministry somewhere where you live. There's plenty of us online. You're welcome here to New Image Christian Fellowship. At any time we are on, you are welcome. But a lot of ministries are getting back to in-person now. And there's got to be a ministry somewhere around you that's really, really preaching the word of God. And I encourage you. Ask now he's your heavenly father. Your family now, ask your heavenly father to lead you to a ministry that's going to break this word down and get revelations just like you heard this morning. Because this will never leave any of us that have heard this this morning. It will never. When we want to give up, when we want to quit, when we want to stop, right away our mind is going to say, but he didn't. And we'll keep going. He even helped me to look because a lot of times I've said, good Lord, why can't I stop? I just keep going and going. Now I know because he kept going. In the toughest time of his life, he never took a break. As Bishop said, he didn't even ask for a drink of water. He just kept going. He kept holding on. And that should encourage all of us this morning. No matter what our day is like, we can keep going because he did. God bless you. God keep you. Thank all of you who have joined us. We're on YouTube now, and I know it's a, a transition because with Facebook, you come right on through. But all you have to do is just click the post that I put up, and it brings you right into Facebook. I mean, to uh, YouTube. You go to Facebook, get on my page, hit the post, and go right on in. It brings you right in. So we bless God. We thank God for you this morning. And we bid you God speed as you go through your day, remembering he never asks for a break. He never asks for them to stop. He kept going. God bless you, Bishop. Thank God for the word. Thank God for you allowing the Father to use you. We pray God's virtue, fresh virtue, fresh strength, and fresh anointing back in your body as you have poured out the word to us this morning. A life-changing word was poured out this morning, and we thank you for that. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful rest.